Well, hello there, internets. We made it. How about if we do a show? We'll Let's do that. Music, we'll start a recording. Here we go. Uh, thanks for finding us on a Thursday evening, and welcome to Caching in the Northwest. You know, this is the only podcast from the birthplace of geocaching in the great Pacific Northwest. Each week, we're going to talk about caches and caches from here and all around the globe. So while you're busy waiting in a never-ending line for Seattle buses, we'll be caching in the Northwest. That's right. That means it's time to bring in our stand-in monkey. Some say... His tram doesn't make all the stops. And others say he has positive train control. All we know is he's called Subway Mark. Welcome. Hey, thanks. Thanks. Good to be back. And I know I'm not quite Land Monkey. I'm quite shorter than him. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are further south, so. That's true. Well, there you go. Yeah. Nicely played. <laughs> You gonna live there? I'm also Chris. choked up about okay, it. Okay, I know. Yeah, it's so good wow. to see Subway Mark again. That's right. Nice. You, you don't do that when Land Monkey's in his studio. Oh, he <laughs> he never asks for a second cup of coffee at home. at home. Wow. Yeah. Ah. Hey, Mark, thank you for joining us this evening. And a quick reminder to everyone that we appreciate the support of our patrons who help keep this podcast and podcast coming each and every week. Uh, thanks to Land Sharks, our corporate Denali level sponsor. If you want to know more about sponsoring the show, click on the Patreon link on the cashingnw.com website. And with that, we're going to jump right into our glow. Yes, Ooh. that's geocaching log of the week, the G L O W. How do you spell glow? Four letters. I almost forgot one. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know. It's one of those evenings. Whether you wrote it or whether you read it, we want to hear about it because great logs simply make geocaching better. Send an email to feedback at cachingnw.com. You can call into 253-693-TFTC or use a voicemail tool right there on the website and just show us how you glow. I bet it's a soft glow right around the edges. Yeah, it's a happy little glow right down there. So this week's glow was brought to us from the cache tunnel of fun. That's GC one E W Z nine logged by Frau Orientier Ungslos. That's a mouthful. Wow. Yeah. And well glow this week, what's that? Well said. <laughs> Thank you. Can you say it backwards? Uh, yeah. T I T. -I. <laughs> T, -I -T. So the log for the glow reads, never been this far from home and never visited geocaches of such an age until now. On the last day of April, we arrived at SeaTac, grabbed our bags, and off we went to HQ. After a warm welcome and dozens of pictures taken, we started the HQGT to throw a first glance on Seattle. Within the next days, we cached our way around Seattle and visited Canada. After that, we were heading south to Portland and then using some unbelievable virtuals as our guides on our way back to Seattle along the coast, we spent our days caching, hiking, and filled with wonder how beautiful nature can be. I adopted Mount Rainier and decided to take it with me to Germany. I'm thinking that didn't work out because I just saw it out there. So thankfully, they left it behind. You don't see it every day, though. They, no. couldn't, get, they, couldn't, get through, they couldn't get through TSA. That's, mm. That must be it. So she says about this cache, he, she says about this cache, that's the kind of cache that I like, the most perfect location. We drove about 2,000 miles, took about 3,000 pictures, dropped lots of fave points along our way, had uncountable magic moments, and dozens of burgers. I could cache with this, Chris. So it was our first time in the USA, and but surely not our last. We'll be back. Thanks to all the cache owners for making this unbelievable trip possible. Greetings from Berlin. Till next time. I'm so glad you read that one. <laughs> you said that name with such 
gumption. Well, something. You had some umption in your gumption? No, not really. Okay. But uh, wow. Yeah, it was a little disjointed. I think maybe uh, English was not their first language, but we well, got through it. I just think about the mountain of paperwork it would take to get Mount Rainier back to Germany. Yeah. But they did do a tunnel of fun with that's not easy cash because that one's hanging off the, the yeah. side of the, the cliff. Yeah. I've that's, done some crazy things and I'm not sure I have the, the gumption to go will, after I, that one. I will. Not oh, it, I stopped there with my family and it was very busy. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. And my wife looks at me and goes, she goes, no. <laughs> I want you to live. You are not doing this. It's the first time she told me no on a geocache. That must mean she likes you. So I decided I wanted to live with my wife. So I agreed. Yeah. But uh, have it in my head that I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back one day and do that one. When she's not in the car. Right. But it's a long way there. Um, speaking of going back. Going back. All right, can, I, can I do one other thing before you please, go back? Please. The, the last line in this log said, thanks to all cash owners for making this trip possible. And I just want to throw out a little personal story. We went geocaching last weekend, logged a few DNFs because we didn't find them all, believe it or not. Don't know if, if you spotted it, Chris, but uh, one of the caches that we DNFed, the cash owner went out and checked on it the next day and said, yep, yeah, it's there. So obviously we just didn't find it. It happens. But I just had a sudden idea hit me and I popped a message off to her in the in the message center and said, thank you for not only placing the cash, but being a responsible cash owner and checking on things. And sorry you had to go out that we couldn't find it. And she sent back a really nice note about that. Really, I really appreciate that note. That means a lot to me because, you know, how often have you posted a note? I, I've got a few around here that I haven't found and there hasn't been any action on it for weeks or months that I wish the cash owner would go out and check on that or do something, or if it's not there, disable it. But she checked on it right away. I responded and, and she appreciated the feedback. So, you know, thank the cash owners that without them, we wouldn't be able to find the caches, right? That's right. Now I got to go back and find it. Yeah. I think that, that's what it is first. Well, but. this weekend we can go out and look for it again. Okay. Now that I know it's there. That's right. I go find it. That's right. Okay. The park was busy that day, my friends. <laughs> yes, it was. I think half the dogs in Tacoma were out. It was a beautiful sunny day here in Tacoma. I, I don't think I've, you know, I mean, it was part of it was a dog park, and I don't think I've ever seen that many dogs in a dog park before. It had to be timed. I mean, it just couldn't be coincidence that the, you know, hundreds of thousands of dogs were there that day. Okay, yeah. that might have been an exaggeration. Not Not far off, though. Yeah. There were tens of dogs there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And not all in the play in the uh, doggy play area. No. So <laughs> Land Monkey, stop it. Yes, we can go geocaching two weekends in That's a row. Right. <coughs> hmm, you're getting me all choked up. I hey, know. Hey. I want to go back. Let's go back. You know what? I don't want to go back and relive 2018. Heck no. But there. But geocaching.com summarized it for us by giving us a year in review. And, you know, just having a few tidbits here and there, 2018 maybe is not so bad. Wasn't great, but maybe it wasn't so bad. Did you know in 2018, uh, almost 24,000 geocachers hid their first geocache? Way to go. Oh, pretty awesome. That's good. They, there, were, there were almost 4 million favorite points awarded as well. That's a lot of favorite points. Mm -hmm. Not all of the same cash, but just put that on record right there. Did you know, on it, on average, a geocache was logged every 0. 0.44 seconds. Oh, holy cow! That's about how often Land Monkey finds a cache. That's how you do power caching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. There were uh, seventy-one million total finds or find logs. We don't know how many people actually found them and never logged them. That's right. I, I've done that. A couple times, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, at least uh, of all the caches out there, 86.9% of them were found at least once this year. There weren't, what, 15% of lonely caches that weren't found all year. So most That's of them were really found good. this year. Yeah. So uh, 
This must be because of Land Monkey. The most liked Instagram photo of 2018 was GC2Y8Q8. Oh, why? Yes. Made in Canada. A. Eh? Oh, yeah. Is that, was that really finding Land Monkey? Hmm. I'm sure it was. Be, yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm wondering if I found that one. Did, there were 43,000 geocaching events, and I think LG9000 went to at least half of them. I think he did. Yeah. Geo Woodstock was the largest of those with 4,628 logs. Ooh. And the, the the day with the most fines was July 7th with with over 500,000 total fines on that day. I, I know I cashed that day. Yeah, I think July it was. July 7th. I think it was a Saturday, wasn't it? Well, of course it was. Okay. I got a one in seven shot of getting it right. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been a Sunday. Probably not a Monday. No, probably not a Monday. I think I remember July 4th being on a Wednesday this year is the only reason it, I said it was, that. So, it was. So there you go. So the seventh would be, yeah. Wow, there's a lot of things going on there. Yeah. So there, there was for caching, you know, even years that we don't want to go back and relive, there were some mm -hmm. bright spots. That's right. So. Well, good. Uh, Subway Mark, do you have any bright spots you can remember in 2018? Let's see. I, July 7th, I was caching in Spokane for the Star Challenge because that was where <laughs> we were caching. There you go. And then in September, I was at Long Beach, Washington for another challenge with a Railroad theme, the Cash Dash and Splash. Cool for the Clamshell Railroad. See, I added, I added two new countries, Hong Kong and South Korea, to my caching map. Not North Korea. No. Hmm. So it was, it was, and I made four thousand caches earlier, early in the year. Oh, nice, nice. So, yeah. You know, my highlight of twenty eighteen, boys. Hmm. Christmas in the Northwest at the Landstruck store. That was nice. That was yep. nice. Sorry, I missed that one. That would have been fun. Yeah, we, we, we missed you, but we had a good time. Yeah. I attended my first gig in 2018. Nice. That's right. You did. Yeah. So we have all that. 2018 wasn't all that bad, but you know what? It's 2019. It's time to move on. Mm -hmm. Now, tonight, we're going to move on with another episode in our radio series, The Hitchhiker's Ooh. Guide to Geocaching. So should we just jump into it or should we give any? Uh, well, any let's, we will say that if you haven't listened to episode one, you might want to go back and do that. If you're, if you're live, well, you're going to hear it right now. But if you're listening to this and you say, oh, I missed episode one, maybe go back and find that and listen to that because this is a multi-part story. You'll be able to catch, catch up here, but episode one was good. Episode two is fun too. There's more yeah, coming. There's more coming. Uh, in case you're interested, I'll release episode two as its own entry into the feed as well as in this episode. So if you want to put one and two together, maybe you want to, I don't know if anybody does this anymore, burn them onto a CD and give them to a geocaching mm. friend. Um, you know, put them in a playlist so that they play one after the other. That's what people do nowadays. Mixtape. Or you, or you can make a mixtape. You can put it on a recordable eight track. Hey, I will give you a personal uh, round of applause if you burn, if you uh, itch it under a vinyl LP. Okay. It could be Guardian of the Galaxy 3. Oh. Mixtape 3. Mixtape. Well, with no further ado, let's listen to Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Episode 2. Caching in the Northwest Geocaching Podcast presents The Hitchhiker's Guide to Geocaching, Episode 2, The Mystery of Miss Terry. Chris is a recently converted muggle who, along with his geocaching friend Jim, has embarked on an adventure to chase the FTF for a challenging puzzle cache. But as they continue, they find the secrets behind this cache are greater than they expected. We join Chris and Jim as they meet in Chris's kitchen to further discuss their geocaching plans. I've spent hours, probably days really, going through the guide. I've learned a lot about geocaching, but I've probably learned a lot more from you taking me out caching the past few times in my geomobile. Listen, you, you sound like an old hand already. 
<laughs> not quite. But I have to somewhat reluctantly admit I am enjoying this. Well, to be clear, I'm enjoying the geocaching. The guide, well, we do hear that from time to time. More importantly, though, I've made contact with Miss Terry, the best geocaching puzzle solver we know. Do I know her? Miss Terry, Miss Terry, Miss Terry. Oh, oh, like mystery. It's a pun. How clever. Uh, yes. Good job. Anyhow, no, you don't know her, but you will shortly. The guide, your towel, and your wallet. You're taking us for coffee. But I have tea and coffee right here. Okay, I'll be right there. Chris was right there. And then after a while, that involved starting a car, returning to the house for a wallet, beginning the drive to the destination, a minor debate over the most efficient way to the destination, and then clarification over the actual destination itself, Chris and Jim entered the coffee shop. They looked around briefly and noted a woman wearing a large hat, dark sunglasses, and dressed all in black. Let me guess. We're going to meet with that woman wearing the large hat, dark sunglasses, and dressed all in black. It's possible. But don't move suddenly and keep your voice low. Um, okay. She startles easily, then, like a chihuahua. Don't be ridiculous. Ac actually, yes, that's pretty accurate. Okay, let's walk over and introduce ourselves. Let's follow my lead. Oh, I'm Wits End. Would you be Miss Terry? Shh. Maybe. Sit down quickly. You're drawing attention. Show me your credentials. Credentials? Shh. Credentials? Yes, of course. Why on earth do you think that I, I mean Miss Terry, would meet strangers in a coffee shop? I've... She has clearly never been to before. Don't ask for credentials. Here. Wits End. The Arctic fox grazes on ptarmigan at the edge of the permafrost. But the summer thaw brings the narwhal as well. Okay, we're good. Seat yourselves and keep your voices low. I have literally researched mountains of content on this puzzle, and I found something new. Literally mountains? Shh. Right. Shh. I got it. Shall I leave then? Okay. Here's the thing. CEO of this cache. New CEO that none of us have ever heard of. Right? Right. Emmett. Never heard of. Right. Only, here's the thing. Their email account traces back way outside of this area. I've done some digging and the user is based in... Canada. <gasps> Canada? Canada? Shh. Yes. Canada. Weirder yet, I think there might be a message embedded in the cache page. Well, yes. The coordinates. No! Shh! Sorry, sorry. No. Not the coordinates. But in fact, I think it's a link to a secret message. I just haven't cracked the code for it yet. Have you tried using the guide? I have literally tried everything. Literally everything? Yes. Well, almost literally everything. I have something new to try, and I'm hoping he'll provide us the breakthrough we need for the FTF. As far as I can tell, no one is making any progress on this cache. Well, I can tell you, it's not in my head. What? It's a long story. You should listen to episode one. Anyhow, who is it we need to talk to next, then? Oh, not a who. But what? Literally the best puzzle solving option ever. Literally ever? Yes, it's George. The geocaching, electronic, omni solving, ridiculously great E thing. It's a bit of a stretch on the acronym, isn't it? You really wanted to use the word George, didn't you? <sighs> Under my large hat and dark sunglasses, I am glaring at you. Duly noted, literally. Okay, so what's our next step? I take you to George so you can help me with the data entry. He's, well, a bit particular about how he inputs data to process. 
I don't see why he should be any more odd than anything else I've experienced this past week. It had been an odd week for Chris since his first introduction to geocaching. He had learned of the existence of geocaching and geocaches, had learned of his best friend's secret job, he had spent literally hours pouring through the Hitchhiker's Guide to Geocaching, and now he had made the acquaintance of Miss Terry. But things were going to get a lot odder yet. The guide has this to say about the transition from Muggle to Geocacher. Congratulations! Simply by the fact you are reading this, please don't stop yet, you are no longer classified as a Muggle but are in fact a Geocacher. Please keep reading, unless you haven't actually found a Geocache yet, because that is also very important. Have you found a cache yet? No? Okay. Put this down and go find a Geocache, then come right back here. Okay, pause reading. All right. Geocache found? Yes. Congratulations, you are no longer classified as a muggle, but are in fact a geocacher. And you can keep reading now if you'd like. Now that you are amongst the fellowship of the geocachers, there are only three key things you need to know. Number one, there are many, many more than three things you need to know about being a geocacher. Number two, geocachers are a quirky and sometimes eccentric bunch like everybody else. Number three, trade fairly for something of equal or greater value and put the cash back where you found it. The fifth thing you need to know, because technically number three was two things, is that things are rarely what they initially appear to be. For more information on the many, many more things you need to know about being a geocacher, please reference the rest of the guide. And with his mind swirling with this sort of useful information, Chris led Miss Terry and Jim back to the car, and off they sped to the secret location where they would find George. Yes, just up there on the left. Perfect. Yes. Okay. Now, before we go in, there's literally just three things you need to know. Don't say it, Chris. Oh, okay. Yes, just three things. Number one, there are many, many more than three things to know about George. Number two. George is a bit quirky and eccentric, just like geocachers. And number three, he likes to trade fairly for something of equal or greater value. So what are you saying? So what I'm saying is, in order to get a valuable answer from George, we need to provide him with the data that is more valuable. That isn't how computers work. Under my dark hat and large sunglasses, I'm glaring at you. You're duly noted. So... What data do we have for George? So far, he's been given the cache description, CEO name, hint, coordinates, really all the raw data from the cache page. Well, what else could we possibly give him? I'm glad you asked. Let's go find out. I'm not really very glad I asked at all. And with that, the trio slipped from the car and through the crowded sidewalk into a very average-looking building with a very average-looking door and into an average-looking abandoned flower shop. The shop had an average-looking recliner chair right in the middle of the floor, and on the seat was what appeared to be a hat of some sort. That would be an accurate description of the hat. If hats were things you wear on your head, that appeared to have a large variety of sensors and wires, and then a thick cable that ran across the average-looking floor and into the blue, glowing, and fogged windows of the flower cooler. I'm really not very glad I asked at all. Oh, really? Now you're going to complain? We are on the verge of literally the greatest puzzle breakthrough ever! What do we need to do next, Miss Terry? We're just ready. He's waiting to trade. Great. So, what do we need to do next, Miss Terry? Uh, yes, yes, of course. So, Chris, if you'll just sit here in this extremely comfortable chair and place this little hat on your head. I don't see myself doing that at all. I'll do it. No! I mean, no, thank you. George will require someone with um a different perspective on this problem than you and I. This is why I was so excited you brought a muggle. I'm not a muggle. Oh, right. I suppose you found a geocache. Yes, I even have an FTF. But have you read the guide? Probably too much of it. Drat, drat, would send you knew I wanted a muggle. No, you said you wanted someone who hadn't solved a geocaching puzzle before. I think your exact words were 
Do you know an oblivious fool? Uh, yes, yes, yes. I, I know what I said. Yes, you're, you're probably right. Yes, in fact, you are right. I think this can still work. Now, are you seated comfortably? Oh, I am not getting into that chair. Of course you are. Don't be silly. You aren't silly, are you? No, of course not. I'm not silly, but I'm not. It won't hurt or anything, you know. It's perfectly safe. Have you tried it? Don't be silly. I'm not silly. And the two of you are beginning to confuse me. Well, that's just silly. Look how silly you are being. Perhaps you need to sit down. Can I get you anything? Oh, okay. Thank you. And once once Chris Chris had had sat in the seat, seat, Miss Terry Terry quickly quickly placed placed the comfortable hat on his head, and Chris Chris immediately drifted drifted off into a peaceful nap in the terribly comfortable chair. He really is terribly silly. Now, you promised this wouldn't hurt him at all, right? Oh, he'll be perfectly fine. In fact, better than fine. George just wants to peek about his subconscious. Chris drifted off into a calm and relaxing nap and began dreaming. In his dream, he met a very smartly dressed fellow who introduced himself. Well, hello there. I'm George. Hi, George. I thought you were a computer. Oh, don't be silly. You're not silly, are you? That's an odd thing to be asked, and I've been asked a lot of odd things lately. Awesome. Well, no worries then. So, uh, Emmett, what do you think? I really don't know. Oh, awesome. That is just awesome, Chris. Having a great dream so far? Your subconscious is just awesome. I am having a blast here with you. My what? Oh, wow. Chill out, big guy. It's all awesome. Hey, do you, uh, what, what do you think about Canada? Well, I, I have a few friends there. I enjoy visiting. They have free health care. Oh, Canada. Awesome, Chris. Keep going, man. Um, Okay. Well, it's north of us. Uh, Well, British Columbia is immediately to the north. There's plenty of trees and mountains and geocaches. Oh, wow. We're really cooking now. Uh, Ever had a dream about Canada? Well, in fact, I have. Just the other day, I dreamt about a trip. I was planning to Victoria. Oh, yes. There it is. Right there. Third slot on the left. Hold still. I'm just going to copy that file. You keep the original. Don't worry. Oh. Awesome. Yes, that's the stop. 85%. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. Hey, you can wake up now and tell Miss Terry to check the USB drive. I've copied a file there. She's going to want to listen to. Well, it's been awesome meeting you, Chris. Come and hang out again sometime. I, uh, uh, sorry. What? And Chris awoke from his brief but dream-filled nap in the chair. With Jim and Miss Terry both leaning close to his face, awaiting the next words from his mouth. Good grief! Why are you so close to me? You scared me half to death. Okay, is that the code? Is that the password? Which part? Good grief! Half to death? No. You... I... Wait. George said something you needed to know. You talked to George? Amazing! No. Apparently awesome. Okay, yes. He said, check the USB drive for a file. Oh, oh, yes. Let's get it from the sensor array hat right now. Uh, here, just, yeah. Okay, got it. Now I'll plug it into my laptop and, oh, it's an audio file. Oh, play it. What is going on? Shh. This message is a warning to those few of you clever enough to find it. In five days, all geocaches will be ours. Let us be clear, there is no ransom to be paid. This is simply your warning. Any attempt to thwart this inevitable outcome will result in our action being taken immediately instead of giving you this grace period. Say farewell to your geocaches. What? I don't understand. I think those are my lines. What What could this mean? Who is Emmett? Why does he hate geocaches? What will our heroes do next? Find out all this and more when you listen to episode 3 of The Hitchhiker's Guide to Geocaching.
All right. Well, The Hitchhiker's Guide to Geocaching was written and produced by Jay Kennedy and is a Caching in the Northwest and Wander Network production. Voice talent was provided by Chris Humphenauer, Jim Paulwitz, Jasmine Paulwitz, Jay Kennedy, and Marina Kennedy. For more information about this story or the Caching in the Northwest podcast, please make sure to follow us on Twitter. That's at CachingNW. And check our website at CachingNW.com. Music is courtesy of Kevin McLeod and freesound.org. This podcast is copyright Creative Commons J. Kennedy 2019, all rights reserved. Now that we've got that out of the way, there's a cliffhanger. You'll have Ooh. to stay tuned another time. Is the cliffhanger <clears throat> hanging on the side of a cliff? Oh, yeah. That's why he's called cliffhanger? Yeah, not a trestle. Oh. <laughs> why would anybody want to hang on a trestle? <laughs> That's right. Now, hanging on a trestle is the only way you can be saved by Superman. Yeah. Be careful of the train. Ooh. Mm. See, that's why you have to rescue them quickly. That's right. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Hitchhiker's Guide to Geocaching. That's right. And maybe even this episode of Caching in the Northwest, but we're not quite done with that yet. Nah, let's keep chatting a while. Because we don't want to be silly. Don't be silly. Uh, You're not silly, right? are you? I'm getting confused again. Who are you? He's no George. I'll tell you that. I'm no, yeah, I am hey, no George. <laughs> no, no George. He really worked hard to get that acronym, acronym in there. Hey, folks, thank you for listening. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this episode. We've got more coming up. Now, next week, we are not doing another Hitchhiker's Guide to Geocaching. You're going to have to wait a little bit for that mm -hmm. one. We are doing something better. If that's possible, Adventure Smart with Sandra Riches. She's going to come on and tell us all about Adventure Start, Adventure Smart. The week after that, we're doing Cash Tour with TW Lair. It's one of my favorite little uh, programs for going out and planning how to go out and get all those hundreds of caches you want to do in a day. That's right. And that'll take us into February. Episode 29 is a special geo tour announcement and a geo tour Q and a, you're not going to want to miss that. That's right. We've got the folks from headquarters coming back on because they promised us in that uh, last geo tour episode that they would have a surprise for us. And they're going to come back on and tell us what it is. Mm -hmm. This may be a caching in the Northwest exclusive. You're going to want to tune in for that. But I also want to take a moment to thank Land Sharks, our corporate Denali level sponsor. Landsharks.ca is the outdoor, outdoor adventure and geocaching store. Check them out online or go in person because they have a very nice shop right there in Victoria, BC. It's big enough to hold an event in. They're open six days a week except holidays and they ship orders online daily. Literally daily. Literally, Literally daily. Yes. And no large hat or dark sunglasses to glare at you there. Mm -mm. We also want to thank our faithful Denali level supporters. That's Land Sharks, Bounce Bounce, Limax, Team Squirrel, and WorldCaching.com. If you want to know, know more about supporting the show, click the Patreon link over in the CachingNW.com website. And these people have done just that, and we want to thank them. Let's see if I can do Land Monkey justice here. <clears throat> he says one breath in the in the comments. Broncos fan for life, Spratter, Camp Clan, Tick Magnet, Kev Mac, D Subway, Mark Doramore, Dune Buddy, Kid Vegas 19, Geo Nav Pros, Wino Seattle, Acker Dog, Billy Robson, Genies, and Teos Keats 94, Trexer Zero, Nope, MC3 Cats, Kennel Barb, M Nerve, Wet Coaster, and Green Words. I was going to do it and I didn't want to let, I don't, you know, I don't want to burst Land Monkey's bubble. He's the one breath guy. <laughs> That's true. He, 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 he is. Yeah. Oh, didn't so face fun. myself where that, you know, well, there. So till next time, Land Monkey, we miss you, buddy. We do. Everybody was hanging on that one breath. It was like 1.2 breaths, which rounds to a one. It, it, yeah, it's a small quantity of one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So until next week, where can our listeners find us? Let's start with our guest, Subway Mark. Sure. You can find me on Facebook. Uh, I don't really, I have a Twitter account, but I don't use it. But if you find Subway Mark, you'll you'll find me. So let's all go to Subway Mark's Twitter account and just, you know. Oh, yeah. Blow it up. Avalanche well, of tweets there for him. Blow it up. Yeah. 
<laughs> Don't mention blowing up a train to somebody. Yeah, yeah you, you you can't say that in an airport or any mm. sort of transit. So no. unless, you're with, the, the unless you're with the Adams family. <laughs> podcast i don't think you can either that may not be well what about you wits end where can we find you well i'm wits end okay right here thursday night nine o'clock the only place to be not like you know hanging out in some airport or something otherwise online facebook twitter and geocaching's messaging center are the best places to, to find me you can find me on instagram too but you got to add some extra letters and stuff search for wits end though and odds are it's me and if it's not me Go bully them into giving up the handle to me. There you go. In a polite way. Chris, you? <laughs> oh, I got to bully the people who ever have uh, caching or, yeah, caching in W on Instagram. I can't get that one. I can get caching in the Northwest on Instagram, and I do have that one. But go. on Twitter and Facebook, it's caching in W. You know what? Head on over to cachingnw.com slash hosts. Read our bios. Find all those links that we just mentioned. And I always say a few extra we hide in there just to see if you're looking. So thank you for taking this time to listen to the ep this episode of Caching in the Northwest. Don't forget that you can be part of the show. Call 253-693-TFTC. Leave us a comment. Ask us a question. Send us a, uh, a large hat and a pair of dark sunglasses any time of the day or night. Of course, you can email us at feedback at cachingnw.com. Don't forget that your support helps keep quality shows coming. So if you like this show, click on the Patreon link on the cachingnw.com website and subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and so much more. This show is produced by Chris Umfenauer and Jay Kennedy, hosted by Chris J. and Jim Paulwitz. This show is licensed under a Creative Commons Attributions 3.0 license, copyright 2019 by Chris Umfenauer. And now, folks, stay tuned for... Ooh. It sounds so mysterious. Mm. Maybe there'll be a cliffhanger. Maybe George will show up. Maybe, maybe so, brother maybe, George were here. Maybe a plane will take off. Mm. Ooh. Planes, trains. Take off, eh? Yeah. Hey. Let's see. I don't see anything. <clears throat> In they the were so I, overwhelmed with the... Yeah. There was, there was the nothing. Guide, yeah. They they nobody pretty... used the hashtag fatas. Nope. Wow. See, Land Mucky doesn't show up and it all just falls apart. That's yeah, cor that's correct. <laughs> yeah. We got to <clears throat> remind, remind people to, to use the hashtag fatas. So we well, have something to talk about in the after show. Keats94 just did. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. Heading to Portland and the original stash in February. Well, that's not far away, you know. You know, I saw his ticket online. Uh, yeah. He posted it online, so I was going to actually use it. Sure. If he okay. wasn't. Yeah. Or maybe just the return <laughs> flight. I'll go back up there. Yeah, he um, says it's going to be number 10,000. I've only found the original stash once. He's going to find it 10,000 10, times. times. Yeah. yeah. Nice. How very cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a trip that I think every geocacher should make. Not that far from me. That's right. You could maybe we should uh, plan a little meetup for Keats. That would be fun. He's got to come right through Tacoma on the way to Portland, right? Well, not if he's flying. Wave as you go overhead, Keats. Okay. Bye, land monkey. Safe travels. Uh, safe he's going travels. through security there, or going through the boarding gate there. He's about to go through the tunnel. I'm probably going to lose you. Lose him. Yeah, that's right. Oh, he'll go through security. He'll get scanned three or four times. Yeah, I think he's. Oh, been... he's just going to take the train. Oh, there you go. There you go. Nice. So, Subway Mark, what's the best way to get from the Vancouver area to Portland on train? Uh, Amtrak Cascades. Yeah, <laughs> is that the only option? That's the only option. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I've always wanted to do the, is it the Empire Builder that goes from Seattle to uh, Chicago? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think about it and I think, oh, that would be so much fun. And, and then I look at the prices and I'm like, no, <laughs> no, I can buy an RV. <laughs> well, that's because you want, if you want to coach all the way, but two nights in coach is not so nice. Yeah. You really want a bedroom. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. Just just need those high speed trains. Ooh, maglev. Maglev. Hey, that sounds good. Or hyperloop. Sure. Are those maglev? No, no, they're not. I'm not sure exactly the technology they're using for that, but it's not maglev. I don't think. Okay, here's a couple of fatas things. Uh, MC Three Cats is hosting his fifteen thousandth fine on his tenth year of geocaching anniversary on February first. Very nice. Nice. Holy cow. Okay, uh, MC Three Cats, you got to send us the code for that, the GC code, so we can put it out to the world. And. <laughs> Iham says uh, everyone in the household went down the cliffhanger song route. Uh, which end? Do you know the cliffhanger song? I don't. I don't. Um, I think. I think uh, Iham said it was from Between the Lions. It was a man named Cliffhanger. Mm. He was hanging on a cliff, and that's why he's called Cliffhanger. Okay. Ah. It. Uh, between the Lions was kind of Sesame Street ish, you know, play on words, teaching sure. you how to, yeah. So I watched the Electric Company where we had episodes of Fargo North Decoder. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he was a sec private nice. investigator. Nice. Yeah. <clears throat> Here's your GC code from 3MC3 Cats GC826JF. Wow, fifteen thousand fines! I'm going to do my best to get up that way. I think we should get fifteen thousand people to attend that. Oh, event. That, that, that would be a giga. Yeah, he deserves it, it. He's a good guy. It should be easy. Hold on, let me go look at the stats. Um, well, we know twenty three thousand or almost twenty four thousand hid their first cash. So, um, there is a chance. I'm trying to see. It doesn't say how many. We know 570,000 geocachers earned a souvenir from Planetary Pursuit. I'm trying to see how many geocachers there are, and you know, at least 10% of them have to be here in this state. Yeah. Um, okay, one more. Fatas from Dora Moore says, I need suggestions for a great cache for find number 5,000, but I'm still limited to terrain two. Hmm suggestions well have you done the original stash yeah the original that's, stash is you, easy. that's a drive up yeah. yeah um that's a bit far but you could catch a ride with keats on the train yeah S stowaway mm -hmm. um I'm trying to think some of the great ones we've done up in, I mean, any of the gold country caches, but yeah, it's hard because I don't know uh, the cache is up there so well, you know, in here, down here in Washington, no problem. I can name a dozen. Yeah. She's got to be in the lower mainland since she can't travel. So the lower mainland of BC there. I was going to say the uh, team Noltex cache that we just did would be a great one. That was a pretty good one. They've got some great puzzle caches here in the Tacoma area, but that's not the lower mainland. So no. Well, I mean, you know, has she done headquarters? Has she done I would imagine she has. She says she's I, done I would... the original stash. Yeah. BC's first stash, Keats 94 suggested. Oh. And being terrain two. That that really puts a uh damper on my thoughts. I mean it's not that terrain two is hard to find, but that's you know on the top of my list of what is a train to cash that's hmm gonna well, we just need to have land monkey come home from his cruise build the most epic gadget cache ever built in canada and rated a train to and put it in dormo's backyard done simple problem solved let's see um i looked this evening and i only saw six webcam caches in canada hmm. now the nearest one is not going to work for her because it's still quite a distance away i lost it oh here it is um it is in uh, saskatchewan so you've got time you just have to get out 
Yeah, stop in Dog River. Just don't go to Wollerton. I'm sorry, I don't know that reference, but it made me laugh. Uh, let's so, see. So I'd, I'd recommend just go into geocaching.com and put, put a filter on with favorite favorite points to enable yeah, with terrain exactly. too. You'd probably find something. Oh, there's a there webcam cache in Victoria. Oh, there you go. Hold on. Oh, there is. So there's seven. Sorry, I missed that one, guys. <laughs> Well, you know, Victoria is separated from the mainland. It's oh. it's not on mainland, so it doesn't count. Big Wave Dave's Dallas at Cook Geocam. I don't know what that means. Big Wave Dave. No, she's just not going to go to the island. Good thought. Well, if you make it to the island, of course, stop in at the Land Shark store. That right there is worthwhile. Yeah. Yeah. They got a pretty good cash right out in front of the store. That's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. Well, she was just there. So, I hope she got it. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll think of things, Dora Moore, and we'll send those to you. Uh, Subway Mark, thank you for joining us this evening. No worries. It was, it was a little different show, but um, fun nonetheless. Yeah. I found a cache that's that's a rate of two outside of Abbotsford's in a cemetery. That has high, pay, high, high pay, sixty oh. favorite points. It's a regular. It's a well, it's a micro, but it's it's, Pioneer, it's BC Spirit Quest number twenty three Pioneer Resting Place GC two Y four FD. There you go. There you go, Darmar. We found the one. That's the one you need to do. You know what? She could probably. Say, do it has a high difficulty high... though. It's a four and a half. It's a four and a half difficulty, one and a half terrain. See, the terrain is what's limiting her. She can do the difficulty. I was thinking, what about a kayak cache? She's just got to float to it. It's all arms. She doesn't need <laughs> legs. All right. She says that's possible. <laughs> well, thanks, everybody. If you've got more contributions, send them over to her. Certainly. Once again, Subway Mark, thanks for joining us. No worries. And thanks. folks, until next week, get out and get caching in the Northwest. <laughs>